I'll call the meeting to order at 6.34 uh, this evening. Um, you can see we're going to start off with the RTCC senior profile. So we welcome Jason Gingold to Everybody. share the information with us. Um, we've got board survey results from our um, outreach activity, outreach afternoon um, at the block party, some collective bargaining agreement to, to review, um, a few other things as well as far as the Raven building goes, et cetera. Um, do I have a volunteer to do the meeting evaluation? I'll do it. Do it. Well, Thanks, Ashley. Is there a form? She does. Do is I that in this? Oh, I think. No, that's yours. Okay. It's usually the back. Yeah. All right. Since Nicole probably doesn't have anything to say, um, we'll move on. Um, and you're, you're first. Okay. So we'd love to hear from sure. what you want to say. Hi, everybody. I haven't met everyone before, so I'm Jason Gingold. I'm the director at the Randolph Technical Center here in our college career lab. So welcome. Nice to see you all. Um, this is senior profile for this year. Okay, and we don't have all our data in yet, um, so I have what we have for now, and then we'll give you the longitudinal data study that we do. I'll do in June, and I guess we'll get back to the next July. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right, so 57 total seniors. Um, <clears throat> our usual kind of centers, you know, remember this is the first year where we don't have Chelsea High School, Rochester High School, and really Bethel High School, right? They've all kind of either um, closed or merged into White River, and even though a few Chelsea students and Rochester, Rochester students are now here at Randolph Union, um, this is what we have left, okay? Um, our Harwood student will graduate this year. Um, we don't have any more coming in. We'll have a student who's not on this list, from Lamoille. Um, we'll lose our Sharon student, um, and I don't think we have another one, and we may gain about four U32 students. Um, seven of our 57 students are female, and they're in our mechanical wing, so either in construction trades, automotive, um, built, uh, agriculture, forestry, or the diesel program. 21 are what we consider economically disadvantaged, um, and that's based upon free and reduced lunch. 30%, I'm sorry, 36% are on some kind of service plan, um, and 20 out of the 57 and are going on to secondary, post-secondary training or college. Zero this year entering the military, however, we think there's one who is applying to the State Police Academy, and that's students from U32. Um, and 30 are going to go work, most of them in their field, which is great news. That's what we really want. Questions so far? Please stop me at any time. What's the seven are working? Seven are working, maybe not in their field, but oh. they have jobs. <laughs> And by, by comparison, so the 36% of the, the senior class at the, the tech center that is, is on some sort of um, support plan, um, by comparison, the district as a whole is around 21%. Um, and then depending upon the school, it ranges from 20 to 26%. And that 36% could be IEP or 504? Yep. Is that uh, typical? Um, I think we're usually closer to 32, 33. Yeah. It's not out of back. Right. I had a question on, on the enrollment. Yeah. Um, do the other schools, do they send their kids to other places or? Um, um, I mean, I, I, it's, it's really, it's not surprising that Randolph has the most since it's right here. Right. But it surprises me, like, you have just one kid from U32. Right. Do they go to other their tech centers too? Their is, is technically the Central Vermont Career Center. Oh, okay. Um, and That's same with Harwood. Harwood and U32 both are technically supposed to send their students to the Montpelier. North Barry Tech yeah. Central yeah. Career Center in Montpelier. Um, but if that, if Central Vermont doesn't have the program the students want, they can explore <coughs> otherwise, and transportation okay. is then on, on there. Okay. Most of those students tend to come to us for diesel or criminal justice. That makes sense. That's why I was kind of thought it was odd that U32 only had one student right. in the tech program. And remember, this is also just seniors. Okay, but, right? yep. As well. And Williamstown um, is starting to send a few more students to Central Vermont Career Center, so in some respect, that's out of our region, um, but that could be for a program we don't have. 
Yep. Um, so our end goals. We pride ourselves on um, our industry recognized certificate. Um, I haven't counted them all yet. Our state data isn't due until next Tuesday. Um, normally we're around the 300 range. I think we're going to break 300 this year. I think it's LNA test of this week. LNA test, right. LNA test was last week. Oh, okay. Um, and 10 out of the 12 passed. I was here for both nights. So that's really good news. Um, but that also includes the game of logging, the automotive uh, service exams, not only for automotive but for diesel, uh, the licensed nursing assistant. Um, last, yeah, last week, today's only Monday. The state seniors in auto passed their state vehicle inspection, so they all got their license for that. We're the only tech center that does that. Um, <clears throat> the education services earned their early childhood fundamentals, which is also a certificate through CCD. Tractor Safety CPR, our advanced manufacturing program, got their NIMS and FEMA certifications. Uh, most of the mechanical wing and advanced manufacturing got their OSHA 10 and many more. So we really pride ourselves on that because we know that when students get an industry recognized certificate, they're going to earn 18% more than someone who doesn't have that certificate. So that's really important to us. This year we had 31 seniors participate in dual enrollment and earn college credit. Got a 57, that's a pretty good number. Um, we offered the ASVAB to all our students, and all 57 seniors used the ASVAB this year. Those scores are a little more difficult to kind of report to, um, but the high school can use those scores as part of their ESSA plan as well. What does ASVAB mean? Oh, it's the military entry services, vocational, okay. uh, aptitude, battery, or something. Yep. Uh, but we don't use it necessarily for the military. It's great because it tells a student if they're in their right field. So if someone scores in the 90th percentile in mechanical and they're not in maybe the mechanical field, we're kind of saying, hey, you have this amazing ability. You might be in the wrong program. Have you ever been interested in this? And that's how we tend to use it. Um, Work-based learning, 35 out of 57 experience work-based learning. Um, 57 students experienced had 100, over 102 guest speakers this year in this room and in our programs, um, which is fabulous because basically what we've decided is by using guest speakers, it enables students to meet an adult that they can then envision themselves going to that career pathway. And so we had 30 students visit SD Ireland um, and go to their site in the Colchester Burlington area and five walked away with jobs. So they have jobs right now because of that. So we're really proud of that math and literacy skills. And since that's now a ninth grade, they wanted a different assessment. And so this year they asked all the technical centers to beta test this, and we were the only one who chose to do it. We used our Perkins funds, um, and we used the month of May to administer that assessment. So it's in two categories, applied math and workplace documents. Um, it was about in 35 or 60 questions, and they start at level one and go up to level seven. So they start a little easy. Um, it takes them about 45 minutes to an hour. So I think before I got here, I would say maybe six, seven years ago, they started using this, and then they stopped. And so we tried again. Next year, the AOE will require us to use this assessment. So for us, this is great, because it's just numbers for us. It's giving us some data for next year. Um, scores can range from one to seven or 60 to 90. If a student gets a 5, I'm pretty sure I keep hearing this, that they can use that 5 that they score with us as, and use it at CCV as their um, uh, graduation kind of get out of jail free card. Um, so we administered the test and the number crunching, and this is just for seniors. Our seniors average in workplace documents a 3.9 or a 77. And 11 of them scored five or higher, so five, six, or seven. And then for applied math, they scored a 4.24, uh, 75.2, and 16 scores of five or higher. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of get into this detail a little bit. We just got the scores back last week. We'll give it to our math and English teachers so they can kind of develop a better understanding of the assessment. Next year, we hope to do a pre-test in October and then a post-test in May that way we can really show, see if there's growth or not. That'd be the, the ideal. Um, it also costs 
$12 a student to take the examination. And so we we're using our Perkins funds for that, but we're hoping that AOE will cut a deal um, so that cost will go down. And these are seniors doing it in May. Yep. So they are on their way out. But you know what? <laughs> were they pretty good about they were. doing it? They were. That's you good. can really see, you know, because I, I, I can see the name of the student and I can see their score. And you can kind of see who was just clicking. <laughs> um, and you can see those that were vested. And, and the reason I say that is because for the most part, most of the students did three or three or higher on everything. Those that might have scored a little lower, I think is m more based upon their service plan ability um, than their effort. We did not follow, we didn't um, read to students this year just because we were beta testing it if the student required it in their plan. Um, the other thing that we, we did, and Carlos did a great job of this, he, when he explained his, to his students why they were taking this, our funds are directly tied to this assessment. And so, you know, when we talked about if you want nice cameras, we need you to do well on this test, because if not, we have to use our money to improve your scores before we can buy new equipment. And so then all the teachers kind of followed that suit, and I think the students bought in a little bit more. And it's also, I mean, 45 minutes to an hour of a test. It's not too bad. It's right. not too bad. It's not all day. I also graded them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Extra point, right? <laughs> in, in English, you know, Mr. Poindexter previewed it with them, and then they just took it in English. And then, because we now have a full-time math teacher, Ms. Tammy Beatty previewed it with them, and then gave them the assessment. <coughs> so it, I think it wasn't as bad as something else that could have been. Good. Um, what we don't know next year is if everyone has to take this, or can we use these scores for our returning students and they just do another or pre and post. I don't know if they're really, like, three times, that might be pushing it if I ask someone to take it three times. I, I can see that. Like, I could probably get away with this. <coughs> um, discipline data. So I keep a running track. I write the discipline letter, so I do keep running track. Um, one for bullying, harassment. And this is just for seniors. Two out of school suspensions, two in, zero theft, which is nice. Um, this is the highest this year. Right? We talked about, if you read the Herald, and we were at the Gifford meeting, or Greenbound Care Board last week. Um, no fighting, no safety, no one property use of technology. So and this is our third year, I think, of keeping discipline data. And this will be in the longitudinal study as well. And then what we're going to focus on for next year. <coughs> um, our, you know, there's a little post to note beside my desk that says, what's public education for? And for, for us, um, career, college, math. How are these students? What are they prepared to do after high school? I think Ann, Ann works with us the most, and I think she'd hopefully speak well of us and, and say that's what we're really trying to do. Where are students going after high school? And not just working up at the barn or McDonald's. They don't need us for that. So what are they going to do with us? Um, you know, and, and Thursday, at our recognition night, we talk a lot about opportunity. Are they taking advantage of the opportunities that we present? Not only certifications and dual enrollment, but those 102 guest speakers so they can network with someone and get a job. Or go to college, either way. Um, so we use this room a lot for that. We're going to continue to work on the cycle of poverty. Um, in May, I went in Montpelier to Montpelier to listen to Paul Gorski speak. And he's a big, um, a big proponent of equity across the board. And we've been basing a lot of our work on bridges out of poverty, and he's now saying that's, that's not the actual text we should be using. So we're going to dig a little deeper into Paul Gorski. And we're also going to um, work with a gentleman by the name of Mark Perna, who wrote a book called um, Asking Why. And we're going to use our Perkins funds, um, if they're approved, about $16,000 of them. And he's going to come in and help us do some career trees um, and develop um, a marketing message, in which we're also hoping will help work with poverty. Because what we find is that students come to us and have this, they may not say they have a poverty mindset, but they're unwilling to break their cycle. And that could be based upon relationships that they currently have. It could be based upon uh, an equity obstacle like transportation. And how do we get them to understand that, but also break themselves out of that cycle? 
and it's difficult because I'm just a middle-aged white guy that, you know, I'm their dad, I'm some old guy that they don't necessarily always want to listen to. We can give them the best advice, but it's like listening to their parents and, you know, parent voices act sometimes. So we try, we convince, we build relationships. Um, and the other thing we're going to do um, is we're working, trying to work with Jenny Campbell, um, who's from the Clara Martin Center, and Jenny B, who will give us a one-day training on um, trauma-informed mental health for youth. So really about teens, but it's a one-day certification, and they don't want to break it up into two days. So I think that might be early September or our next full in-service day, which is not till November or January. But they don't want to do two half days. So that will be our professional development for staff. And then, um, unfortunately, our digital portfolio and our open house went really well this year. We moved away from trifolds. We felt students really got into their digital portfolios. But the platform we were using called Protein, um, they're closing. Mm -hmm. The entrepreneurs made their money and gave up. Um, so we'll probably be moving to LinkedIn, which I don't think will close anytime soon, hopefully. Um, but we're also doing some research, and people say LinkedIn's the new resume, so we'll find out pretty quick. Question? I'm always here. Open doors. Are there any program or programmatical changes for next year yes. that you anticipate? Yes. Um, so we are taking our environmental resource management program and merging that to the agriculture program. Um, we're not going to change the name. Next year it will still be Diversified Ag. Um, they will take over the sugaring. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, most of the competencies were pretty equal as far as the standards. Um, so we're not adding a lot of other new things to that program. Um, the numbers worked out better going that way. And so you're not having to turn kids away from that program. Correct. You, yeah. Correct. And it gives us, if you haven't been out back in a while besides parking, um, you can see the five garden beds, the high tunnel. Um, now they have the sugaring operation. It really makes for a land steward program rather than two separate programs and trying to appease both. So that's our first programmatic. Right now, we don't have any students signed up for our business management program, which is a, a real shame. You know, students walked away with up to 12 dual enrollment credits in that program, and we can't fill it. What do you attribute that to? Uh, that's a good question. We've been banging our heads on that. Mm. Um, you know, it just may be not, and I hate to say this, but not hands on -y enough mm -hmm. um, as a program. And so this year, Mr. Boulay is staying. Um, and he's going to go, or for next year, go into some programs and really work on building those business skills. That all of our programs need business knowledge and pass those standards. So instead of kind of coming to him, he'll go to them. But he'll still teach his three, two, three dual enrollment classes as well as financial literacy. Um, and if you go back to the beginning slides, Harwood Union High School requires financial literacy as a graduation requirement. So does U32. And so we're going to start. We're not. This year coming up, we're not going to require students to take financial literacy, but if a student needs a math and may not be ready for after Algebra 2 or even Algebra 2, we're going to slide them into financial literacy. So we're slowly getting towards maybe requiring that ourselves as a school. We just don't want to double up. So if a student needs pre-calc and, uh, and financial literacy, that's a lot of time out of program. Those are our only two program changes. <coughs> we'll have a new teacher for health careers. I'm just waiting. I've done all my recommendation calling. I'm just waiting for the hard copy recommendations before I send the recommendation to Mr. Millington. Yeah, that was somebody that's already been here for a little while, it Correct. sounded like, which is good. Um, pre tech. Well, so, Mr. Uh, pre tech, that's another one. I'm going to sit down for this one. Um, <laughs> so, we have an open room behind us in our forestry program. The idea is, uh, let's see, how do I start this? So that opens up a space. We don't have a lot of space in our school, and we're not gonna build in a building or anything like that. So the Agency of Education through Act 189 really wants the tech centers to do career exploration with students starting as early as sixth grade. Not necessarily, it's not marketing, it's not recruitment, it's really understanding of career exploration so that students then can identify with a career and start planning their academic pathway and have the right skills to then be ready by the time they get to 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade. So because the forestry program closed after the budget was approved back in town meeting day in March, 
we have a, a little bit of a surplus or budget that we can then use to start a pre-tech foundations program. The application went to the state um, last month, and Mr. Millington and I and Ms. Pembroke are meeting tomorrow at 9 to discuss what that would look like. The idea would be that we would start a small career exploration program, grades 6, 7, 8, and that wouldn't just be for Randolph, but Williamstown is really interested as well. Um, the Northfield principal who was leaving said he was really interested, but I, I don't know if that will be the case with the new principal. White River hasn't responded at all. Um, we won't go into Montpelier and U32 in those places. But the idea is to do a STEM math and science program based around career exploratory with kind of a traveling teacher, both for here and at Williamstown, and using our resources. There's a model up at um, both in Linden Institute and at St. Albans, where um, it really works well at Linden Institute. They have um, a lot of Northeast Kingdom uh, bicycle uh, bike trails. And so their pre-tech program is all about like the science of biking. And so that's how they're, they're using their internal resources. So we have to figure out what that means here. We're kind of thinking like the why lab. Why, does, why do things work? And not just necessarily recruiting for the programs we have, but students can come and get academic credit in math and science, understand about different career pathways. It would not be an all-day program. It's not another Raven. It's for every student, short blocks, hmm. quarter or semester long. So, so you're going to... Are you going to bus kids from Williamstown? No, the idea that? would be that or? our teacher would go to Williamstown oh, because and do they have a, a block seventh period that they would allow us to use. Okay. And ours okay. would be in the morning here. Okay. Um, so it's, it's figuring out the revenue first, and that's why we're meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How do we count these students? And I think from what I've heard from other tech centers is we just roll them into our full-time equivalent count, which would be really good because that also means that tuition would go down the following. Well, later, not next year, but six month semester later. That would be pre -tech. So that's the, the wish list. I have the job description ready, um, just have to know the financials in there. Hmm. That's interesting. Other questions? Are you at capacity with your enrollment, or nope. do you have to? No. Um, let's see. If we did some quick math, next year we would have 11 programs. Capacity would be 11 times 16. So 160. Right? 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 right now we're at 130. Our building is not built for 160. We have one toilet in the men's room. Um, we, we, we are not physically built for 160. Yeah. Our best is like 145. So just judging from your earlier presentation, which was very good, thank you, um, there are some really nice successes. And I'm wondering how you're capitalizing on those in a marketing way to entice kids to consider a technical program, considering their workforce needs within our state and certainly locally. So my hope is um, Mark Perna, the gentleman I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. he's worked at Stafford Tech recently and I believe Burlington Tech and their enrollment is at capacity. And when I asked those directors what it was like working with him, they attribute their work with him to their increase in enrollment. Um, they also have four times our budget and could use him more often. Our budget's not that big. And they're using Perkins funds is solely what I'm talking about. Um, so he's willing to come here and spend a full day with us on September 3rd, start us on our career trees. We'll do that work and then continue to work with him for the year. But that will be help become our marketing message, our mm -hmm. new marketing message. Mm -hmm. um, his book is on my nightstand. I have not read it yet. That's my summer homework. Um, but according to him, we are recruiting wrong. And by that, he means our message in verbs. And so I have to figure out what that is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we also are in a smaller market. Um, the numbers that we have to recruit from are reducing right now. So I don't think we'll ever go back to the 175s. There's also, we were talking to Jamie Canari, who's the Williamstown yeah. principal, and he has 70 students out of his building that, aren't, that are not only at tech centers, but at early college, dual enrollment, right. work-based learning. Right. So it, it's, it's not just the kind of that competition. There's, there's other opportunities now that we're 
in competition. Sure. Thank you. But that's the idea of working with this gentleman who will hopefully help us. They had a pretty good upturn in enrollment the last year or so um, when they transitioned to Jen Joles as a guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. um, they've done a really good job in terms of marketing along with, with Jason, mm -hmm. um, which is one of the reasons we were up, up of where we are at this point in time. When, when you've talked with the other tech centers, mm -hmm. a couple of the other tech centers, they all have sort of a computer-oriented program. Are they finding those numbers are good? Is it, because I, I just, it's all it over seems the map. like. Um, when I was in Burlington, they had a computer programming um, Cisco program, and then they closed it, and they're starting again. So that, that could mean a couple different things why they did that. My fear is that, um, you know, in K through 10, there is no computer programming or, right. or really technology class in this district. And, and I mainly say this district because we get the majority of our students from, from the Randolph area. And it would be difficult to all of a sudden try and entice 16 students to come to a computer class programming all day kind of program class right, when they haven't experienced experience. that from K to, K, K to 10. So next year we will do some research because in 20, let's see, so 19, 20, 2021, right, two years from now, we will have the opportunity, I think, to start two new programs at the center. And the other way I'm looking at this is, I don't think CTEs can afford a large umbrella of, of offerings anymore. There's too much competition. Mm -hmm. um, the governor, or the current governor, you know, his mandate is advanced manufacturing, cybersecurity, which we're putting into our criminal justice program. Um, that's another place for computer programs. And also, you know, agriculture, healthcare, construction trades, those are the big ones. So as we look at our centers, what can we afford? Again, we can't build our new spaces, so what do we have? What can contract? What can we combine? Also, what can we double up on? We have a very successful LNA program, which is great for students for one year, but if we built on a different health careers program, and it doesn't mean one has to be first or the second, two different tracks, that if they were combined, we've been told students can go to Norwich University and start as sophomores. That sounds like a pretty enticing message. Mm -hmm. And same thing if they attend in CCB. Now all that still needs to be worked out, but there's enough room for an LNA program and a di uh, med di diagnostic, phlebotomy, and terminology, that kind of work. You know, part of us wants to do, um, and we still need to do our labor market research, but an electrician, um, Mm -hmm. program because then you can build also into the apprenticeship mm -hmm. and that would fit nicely in that room based upon its size mm -hmm. where plumbing I don't think would work on that side of the building as well mm -hmm. in that specific room um, so there's lots of opportunities but I think we have to be careful of what silo in some respect and you know the silo I think when we hear silo that's kind of scary but I think a little bit of contraction will give us better numbers rather than being too spread thin on, on random programs so ideally by November, December, we would have an application in the state to start two new programs after we see our labor market research and your approval because it has to be in the minutes. Anyway. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank Thanks for having me. Okay, so we've, um, the next thing up is the board survey results. And um, I have a poll here, and, and Anne, feel free to ch chime in. If you want to come a little closer, feel free. Oh, wait, certainly, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so a number of us were there at, uh, on June 1st, Saturday afternoon. We had a lot of people come and sit down and take time to fill out the surveys. I was quite nice. impressed. And, um, Thank you to all who participated. It was great. Um, it went quite well. So we were there until about 3.30, 4 yeah, maybe. About 3.30. Yeah. Um, things were sort of um, just being packed up at that point, and, and they were getting out the beer tent and, and dance music. So it just was 
the time. We don't need surveys after the. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah. That would have been more fun <laughs> to have those responses, right? Yeah. So there was quite a lot of discussion. People sat down and yeah. and talked. So um, yeah. quite went quite well. And thank you to those who who participated on a very nice Saturday afternoon. So wanna. Sort of Did everybody uh, get a chance to read the survey results? Mm -hmm. Did everybody read through them? It was, I, I, don't, I don't remember the exact number, Ann. Um, 27. 27. So 27 uh, people filled out surveys. I know when I was there, there were several people who didn't want to fill out the survey, uh, but they talked to me for 30 minutes. And so I filled out a couple of the main bullet points and threw them in there. Um, I think the overall, it's it's kind of a scattered result. If if you saw some were, oh, this is great. There's nothing. I I think everything's going very well. Some are in the dark on what's going on, and then others there are very um, pointed at uh, what they think needs to be addressed. And I did see too many doubling up. I didn't remember. I don't remember seeing like any kind of trends. There was nothing. It was very well, person oriented. And just so you know, when you're reading through this, response one to each question is the same person. Like every, you know. So the response one. So response, response one, one and response, response one, yep. they're all the same yep. person. And all, all the way down through the 27 responses. I just thought having all the answers to the first question first would be good. So, you know, that you can say so you can read it however you want. But I think there were definitely a lot of positive responses. There were a lot of negative responses, as you said. There was just some that just don't have. I had a lot of folks who said, I can't fill out a survey because I have no idea what's going on in the school. I don't have any connection to the school at all. And I would have, you now looking back on it, maybe I should have had some sort of a, we should have had some way of um, recognizing how many people didn't feel like they had enough information to fill out the survey. Because mm -hmm. maybe that's a maybe that's a response that we should know about too, you know? Because mm -hmm. you have to be fairly invested in the school system to even fill out a survey at this point. So um, people over there, would would you guys think anybody wanna I think it was a it was a very good thing to do. I think we should definitely try to do more that type of stuff. I think that would help the you know, kind of perception of the board um, with the general public and the parents and whoever. But, um, but I thought it was a good time to, good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seemed like people were really, I was surprised by the number of people who stopped to talk to us. Yeah. I was actually thinking people wouldn't even know what to say or wouldn't be interested in it, so that was encouraging. One thing next time we shouldn't have, are you athletics on it? Yeah. <laughs> like, is this about sports? No. Sports. So we should get a tent or a new sign? <laughs> <laughs> or we probably should sure, just turn it around. Way. <laughs> um, yeah. There was quite a few people that thought it was the athletics tent. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, it was the best we could get on. So is anybody can anybody think of another event that we could do this going forward? Uh, I mean, me thinking aloud here, the next the next event I could think of is the Fourth of July. There's usually some pretty big festivities oh, yeah, right, throughout the right. throughout After the day. The parade, some parade happens, and then. I'm not sure if they're going to be over by the pool again this year, but I would uh, so. there was community there, not just uh, for activities. Hours hours, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. for hours. Um, yeah, and, and you know, somewhere along Main Street too, as people are waiting for the exactly. parade, it would be a great mm -hmm. place to be have a tent and be sitting. Mm -hmm. And uh, do we, would we? Are you envisioning doing the exact same survey or? I think, yeah, I, I personally would like to see the same survey. I don't know about you guys, just because I, um, we got responses, but I, I didn't really see anything that jumped out at me as Trend. repeated, nothing that's usable right now anyway. 27 responses and all 27 were pretty much different. And mm -hmm. so I think if we did the same questionnaire mm -hmm. and then perhaps get another 27, 50, something like that, mm -hmm. then maybe we could see some kind of um, pattern that we can address. 
Is it possible to build an electronic form either through survey monkeys or something yeah. like that oh, and yeah. send it out through front porch oh, form? I can do that tonight. Yeah, there was definitely a couple people who asked for that. Because then you can send it out that way, a front porch form, or how like, people want to do it via social media. I don't know how that Unless, would work. Does but. the school have like a paid survey monkey? Because I have the free survey monkey. We should go through that. Yeah, and Tina's pretty good if um, we can con connect right up with her. She can actually develop it for you, get it together, have you check it out, and sure. pull in all the results. That's a good idea. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. There's also the farmer's market every Saturday at Yes, Gifford. perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then starting in the first week of July, we'll have the community concerts every Tuesday night that are free um, through the summer. There's quite a few Is events. it generally the same group of entourage of people that come to the farmer's markets? So I don't know because I'm usually working at my farm, so I don't go <laughs> yeah. to that one. <laughs> yeah, I've never been yeah. myself. I, I go to it's the well attended. Most, um, most, most weeks, and I see the same people there every time I go. Um, even, are you talking about vendors? Or no, I was the, talking about the, the people, people who actually go. Yeah. yeah, the people that actually go, I usually see the same people. Okay. Um, but I yeah. think I'd only go like once. Yeah. Maybe just yeah. say, once like, what's, pick, yeah, like when one. things are really in season. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I would say and, July or, or, right. or, or August. If you go right now, you're not going to get many people because right. no, none right. of the local farms are. If we were to go in August to the farmers market, that gives the people who that gives us July, you know, a month difference, and maybe a different audience, and maybe somebody who said I I don't know enough to fill out that survey, and but looked it over, would have a month to think about it because sometimes those things percolate in your mind and. So just thinking, farmers market in August, Fourth of July parade in July. So maybe in June, do we? Is there anything left this month? When did you say your concert July. start? July. But I think Melody's idea of a survey monkey. Yeah, mm -hmm. survey monkey that this can month. Be, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, I'm trying to remember, I think we had we did the one at the beginning of the year that the board asked me to do. I think it was October. Mm -hmm. We had pretty good. I think it was over 200, somewhere between two and 300 people responded to that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, That's huge. Yeah. So then we, we typically don't meet in July, um, mm -hmm. so we will have to correspond via email to see who, who might be able to sit for a couple hours um, on July 4th, and we, we again can share that um, responsibility. So. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know the details of the parade? Anybody involved or anything? No. I can I can find out. All right. As far as uh, if they're if they're going to be over by the pool oh, I'm again, because they they've been on that two years now, I think. Yep. Oh, more than more than that. I mean, it, it seems like. Has it been one two years? Oh yeah, yeah. It's hmm. been going just, on since my kids were little. Yeah. But the, 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 all the tents all the over activities, there? Yeah, I don't yeah. remember all the tents oh, going over there. Maybe not all the t There's usually some. Yeah. There's some big activities. Yeah, usually yeah. All right. Going on. So we can count on that happening. Yeah. Right. And this year, the Kimball um, book sale's not happening, so maybe right. we could use that lawn. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. For, oh, it's oh. Know, before the parade, and then just not do anything during the parade, and then sit up at the, mm -hmm. you know, by the pool after. We, we could ask Kimball. Yeah. You want me to ask him? Sure. Okay. Are there a lot of people? I don't know. I'm up in the neighborhood where the parade yeah, comes, I so I never am downtown. Tons, yeah, of, tons people. of people. So there's downtown. usually, okay. And everyone's waiting there for a good hour or more. And, before and a lot of people park at the high school and mm -hmm. walk and up, so they're oh, going perfect. right, yeah. oh, right by the kids. Yeah, that's why I was thinking on that end of town is best. Yeah, exactly. It's very unlikely they know that yeah. the library is not doing their annual book mm -hmm. sale, and so they're going to go through there anyway, yeah. looking for the book sale. Right. No book sale. No. But there's a survey. What would you like the answer? <laughs> it's not a book. <laughs> but you could write one. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I forget about that. All right, is there anything else anybody wants to say about the survey? Does anybody want to well, what are we? What are we going to do? So we're going to gather all this information. Then what are we going to do? What's our plan? 
Uh, I think first we, we look it over and kind of collate and see if there's any trends. Any trends, yeah. okay. Is there anything that, that seems people brought up repeatedly, out. and right. then perhaps uh, if there are, then we, we, we can maybe investigate that a little bit to you know kind of pull the string a little bit and see what is going on here. Um, I didn't, like, reading through this, it's good information, but then the only thing that jumped at me and I thought to myself, yeah, why is that, is the accreditation. Um, mm -hmm. we, we don't, we're not accredited, and so I looked into it myself, like, kind of thinking, high school, accreditation, I don't know if that's normal or not, and the state, the need ask would be who, who would, yeah. be, who would we, we'd use, mm -hmm. and there's only about, I don't know, 12, 15 schools in the yeah. state that are actually yeah. need ask for need ask has been falling out of favor yeah. for about a decade now for a couple of reasons. Um, it actually started in, in Massachusetts, started in Belmont when I was there. Um, they are a, a self-created organization that, right. that, that popped up many decades ago. Um, and they're incredibly expensive. I mean, your right. your it's yearly like four grand. Do, your yearly dues are ten to twenty, and oh. they don't they don't do anything until year ten, and then it's about sixty or seventy thousand to have them come in and do the the site visit. Really, that's not listed on the website. It's listed as like uh, forty five hundred. Yeah, it depends it depends on your school, but that's not. It's, it, it goes oh, by wow. size. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what ended up happening was that when. No Child Left Behind came in, and the state started collecting all these data on all the, on the all the schools that we report out in the report card to everybody. It was like, why? Um, we've already got all the data that they're they're going to generate. It's a uh, it's a self report that we do ourselves anyway. So a lot of schools have just stepped away from it um, just mm -hmm. to, to save the money because the data is all there in terms of their trends and everything else that they need to know about themselves. Um, matter of fact, Jason at the Tech Center um, pulled out of NEASC last year because of the cost. They still right. have to do an accreditation, um, but he went with a, a, a group that does a very good job that was you know a tenth the price. Mm -hmm. um, and his was uh, a little bit different because he had to do his every three years, I believe, uh, whereas usually with the high school. So, yeah. That's an awful lot of money. Uh huh. Awful lot of money for. And and the people that really do the work, um, you spend two years. Uh, so year ten is when you get the the site eval. The two years prior to, it engages the entire uh, faculty at the high school. Um, they're the ones doing the work and doing the analysis. All the folks are doing when they come in on that site visit um, is they're checking through, seeing if you got some evidence to back up what you're saying, and then yeah. basically saying, yep, yeah, you got it right. And don't some of the people who come in on the site visit, aren't they other educators? They're all other schools? educators from yeah. other schools. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, they're volunteers. That would be helpful, though, the, having outside eyes come in to, to speak to our administrators and teachers because so the, that's, this, I think that's the benefit that's the of the this, The state has a, has a process that happens every three years. We're going into it in the, the fall in October. Um, the IR, I forgot what the last piece is, but it's, it's their, their, their review cycle. Um, so they will have educators from other schools that come in. It's very much like the NEAS process. It's just it doesn't cost an arm and a leg because um, the state runs it as part of its requirements. And it's every three years instead of every time. And is there a self-study that's associated with that? Or, yeah, a little bit, yeah. So, yeah. So basically we're saying that NEAS is just obsolete. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So that we, we talked a little bit about that at the last meeting, but I can pull that information back up again for folks. But I believe that comment, I was there when that was made, that comes from a former teacher that was here. Yeah. Was and and she, she was not extremely happy with the way the school is now. Mm -hmm. And she had been a longtime teacher here. And yep. you can tell by that, that note that it, she's not very happy with it. But Right. Um, but that was, I'm pretty sure that was the same one. It was. I read, because I, I, when, I, when I saw the two teachers, they, yep. when they left, I read me, read, because I was very interested in what teachers had to say. Yeah. Yep. Two comments there. Two of the better comments. <laughs> but, yeah. Integrated field review. Right. Yeah, so that's, that happens every three years and the state comes in. And it's very, it was interesting reading through, reading through it. It's kind of new in the state. Matter of fact, it was piloted three years ago and this district was a part of the pilot. Um, okay. But it's very similar when I read through it um, as part of the, 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 the prep for it in the fall. It, it, it's almost identical to the NEAS process. Okay. So maybe we should talk about that then. Yeah, maybe. Well, I'm just wondering, 
So for an example, uh, uh, Bellows Falls is one of the schools I remember because it was at the top. Um, I, if you go to the website, it says NEESC. You know, it, it t talks about their accreditation. Yep. And, and uh, all colleges in Vermont are NEESC, I think. I don't think there's anybody that's got a different regional accreditation. I think they're all NEESC. Yeah. And somewhere on their website, it says, hey, we're NEESC. We go through this process every year. Yes, uh, maybe all the schools in the state are going through the state process, but like I didn't know, and I'm even on the school board, that we do this yeah. every three years. And so that would have happened like when I first joined the school board, yep. and I don't remember it being, you know, when NEASC comes to Norwich when I'm there, it's a big deal. Everybody knows NEASC is coming yep. because lead up for two years is a self-study, and then when they're there, everybody has to meet with these guys. And I don't recall that happening when, I, I mean, I'm sure teachers did meet, but it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. And so what I'm wondering is, do we want to point it out and try to make it more of a big deal so the community understands that, yes, we're not part of NEASC anymore. However, the state has this new process. It's great. It's wonderful. It does the same things. We just don't have to pay for it. Yeah. And, and as, the same. it's the easy same. enough. And as far as the NEASC is concerned, um, I don't know when you guys stopped. Um, yeah. I, 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 I seem to remember Brent talking about it, but I don't know if it's, it had stopped years prior, but I remember Brent mentioning it. Yeah. Right. I don't well, remember him mentioning that we are not doing it anymore. Oh, yeah. I, I don't did. remember you. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it was, it was financial, and it was, it there was a wasn't, waste. it was a waste. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's, a, it's a huge cost. I mean, right. it's, right. it's, um, it's not, not what it used to be. Yeah. Um, right. So it is. I, I haven't seen one. And, and Swampscott was a smaller school, uh, and so we're going back about a better part of a decade now. Not, um, but the integrated field review, until I go through it, I, I won't be able to right. say if right. it's... But the way that it's set up, the process that it follows is almost identical to NIAS. So what yeah. policy would be driving us to direct him to do this, though? Right. There is I no. mean... Well, you, you have a right in right. terms of your ends. I mean, right. if you're, if if you're you discovering things a, through your, your survey and you find patterns there that you had verified you believe them to be the case, then you modify your ends, um, I, would, I would argue. It's an assessment of the ends for sure. That's, what, that's the whole reason they're doing these things. Yeah. It's, it's the, uh, they're going, they should, I guess, if it's like the NIAS, then they're going to be coming and looking at the processes leading to the um, grades and whatnot, and then they're going to be looking at what are the outcomes. And yeah. with NIAS, anyway, I don't know about this, but it's towards the school's goals. So NIAS looks at what your stated goals are, what you're doing to achieve those goals, and the steps that you're doing to ensure that the goals are being furthered. And so if it's similar to that, then it's exactly what we want to be um, looking okay. at. And they have a little bit of uh, a stronger focus. Again, I'm just I'm learning about it um, in terms of a lot of the state initiatives that are out there. How are you doing on behalf of personalizing pathways for students? Do you have your multi-tiered support system set up and in place? Um, so they, they do have that eye on things as well. Is they're, they're, they're looking to make sure that all the quality standards that the state expects to see, um, that's really what they're evaluating you on. Mm -hmm. so. That's NIASC or the other? That's the, the state. The integrative? Field review. Field review. Yep. So those are two different. So it sounds to me like um, it's a thorough evaluative yeah. tool. Um, this is a, a point four position for art, um, replacing Candy Vandegreek um, at the Brookfield and Braintree. Um, do we need that motion now or when we do the consent agenda? Um, what, what I would do is, recommendation is to do a motion now to put it on the consent agenda so when you hit it, it's just there. Okay. And it gets approved with everything else on the consent agenda. I'd like to make the motion to add a teacher contract to the consent agenda. Excuse me, consent agenda. A second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so let's add that to the consent agenda. So thank you. Um, so the support staff negotiations, um, you were there. You can you can speak a little bit as well. Well, the support staff wasn't there. I was there for the very first meeting. For then, first. Yeah, that um, sense. They, we had a tentative agreement um, with them, and I can kind of, I can go through all the details as much as you want. Um, made them an offer, uh, they agreed, the board actually voted on the offer. Um, they did not. Um, 
the offer sheet that they were given had two pieces to it. Um, Is this the handwritten one that you had at the last? No, that's the that's the teacher's oh. contract. So support staff are like the the, the paraeducators, yep. um, cooks, um, faci uh, facilities uh, folks. Um, so they they had the agreement that was there. Um, the offer was basically two bullet points. Actually, I'll give it to you if you just want to see what it looks like. Um, and then on March 21st at 3 p.m., I met with the lead negotiator because they were asking, what does this mean in terms of new money? And we talked about what the definition of new money meant. And I said, you know, um, I'm happy to, to put that down there for informational purposes. Um, but the definition that I'm using in terms of new, new money is everything in terms of your, your benefits. So when your salary goes up, um, it also means that we also have to pay a little bit more for FICA. It means that we have to pay more for your long-term disabilities. So that's what we're using. We also spoke in that meeting at the time that um, if we were going to negotiate at the table, right, it wasn't going to be around new money because it's con too confusing over, over definitions. So that's why the first two bullets were the offer. Um, what happened after the agreement is they were saying, well, there's discrepancies here. And I said, well, well, what do you mean in terms of discrepancies? Uh, they said, well, I remember the agreement was, you know, offering folks 4.25% uh, or a change on the initial grid, whichever is greater. And I said, well, do you see that in the the sheet that you, you signed off for the tentative agreement, which is in front of you. I said, more importantly, that 4.25% or the starting grid, whichever is greater, was never even discussed as part of any of the meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I think is is happening is they're like, well, you know, you kind of got a discrepancy. Our, our calculations of, of new money don't quite match yours, so we want to go back to the table. And so that's kind of where we sit at this point in time. Um, I recommend going back to the table because I, what we kind of had planned to give is what we want to give and they're kind of at that point where they're accepting of, of what we want to give. We just got to get back to the table to do it. Right now we're kind of locked in a position um, trying to move forward because procedurally they're supposed to bump. So unless the board here decides to go back to the table, we can't do that. Um, so they're asking to kind of reopen the negotiations because of the discrepancy. I can give you the update of, of where we're at. I think kind of we had set aside a certain amount of, of money in the new budget that was intended to go all in for them. Um, the reason being for that is, as we've kind of discussed previously, um, is that you know one of the executive limitations on me is making sure that folks are, are in the comparable range. A lot of the categories in the support staff group were not in the comparable range for what's happening around us, so we were trying to bring them up to that. Um, the piece that that we've put together and that we'll talk about in executive session in terms of an offer does just that. It gets them into the comparable range, especially the ones that were lagging behind, um, um, but also on the competitive edge of it, which, which is kind of where we want to be. Uh, we've had a lot of turnover, uh, the, the cooking staff, um, the facility staff especially, um, were lowly paid and that was one of the reasons for the, the turnover, so they're going to have the biggest impact um, overall in terms of the neg negotiations. Um, but we can talk about that in executive session. Uh, okay, so let's table this until executive session then. Yep. All right, um, draft of annual agenda, which is enclosed in our agenda. Um, Linda, this was just sort of pretty much what we had last year. Yeah. Um, I think I moved the auditor because last year I think we had it like January, or February, and that's not going to happen because the tax stuff they're not going to be able to come. So I put it what it was this year. Which was May. Yeah. Is this just a guideline, or do we need to approve this? I don't, I don't know. Um, no, this was taken from um, Mike Andrew. It's, a, it's an agenda for the board um, that is kind of not only stating for you, but stating to the public what you're going to be meeting on when. So I okay. would say that you would need to approve it if folks are happy with the state that it's in. We can approve it. Um, as sort of a skeleton, um, we do move things around as things come up um, or um, sort of 
you know, like just the way the schedule 11, changes. I don't think we need to discuss the superintendent contract again, do we? Won't we have been done with that? Right, he's on a two-year contract. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that one. Do you guys want to update it and then do a approval later? I think so. Maybe, Maybe we need to approve it in draft. August. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. That's okay. And this is that one's that's usually a board function is putting on the right. Yeah. So let's um let's take the time to And we're not doing the keynote speaker thing. Right. Some of this right. Thing. right. Some Literally I took what you had last year. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, because so, I, I don't know what you got. So why don't we right now, if anyone sees anything else, let's mark it up a little bit and um Well there's plan community events. I mean right. are we I think after this Whole round of um, community engagement this summer. We might be, maybe we should put something in August or September for review community engagement from the summer months and then plan for the you know response to community engagement and then the next steps. You want to do that in September then? Late September, I think. Uh, since sense? we've got a meeting in October, or excuse me, in August, right. market, so that would give us time to do that. And then we can just see how that went overall and kind of put together a game plan for that because I think that we're going to want to keep moving with certain things. We don't want to lose momentum on that. Yeah, and that was what this time was for in the meetings for you guys to look it over and give feedback to each other. Do we have a community engagement plan? We don't really. Um, Remember, we had talked about creating one. Mm -hmm. We had Val come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say we don't. Um, no. You were on the subcommittee with Kate yeah. and no, someone else. No, it was we needed more input. Mm -hmm. uh, we we had so little. To, uh, right. Like that's what we, we 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 have so many questions that we couldn't get any plan together. I mean, I, I think it would be worthwhile to use one of our policy governance trainings at the end develop. of a meeting, mm -hmm. yeah, to talk about you know and develop a, a, a strategy really for our outreach and mm -hmm. receiving input as well. Mm -hmm. Would it make sense to do that? In October, if September we discuss about the results, then think about it. And yeah, then let's come do back that. the next month and mm -hmm. then do that. The yeah. Plan. You know, I think we're, you know, my intent is to continue to schedule ongoing um, policy governance discussions just so that we're all involved with you know, our own our own governance. So, the one of you guys are writing changes? Or I'm writing some changes okay, now. Okay, yes. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind if I, know what's going, if I know what's going on. <laughs> the plan staff appreciation, I think, um, Lane, I'm not sure, but I think we discussed we were just going to make that a regular occurrence that during National Teachers Week or week. whatever that's yep. called. Appreciation it's, Week. It's national, yep. right? Yeah. So just have it, or the reoccurring event that happens. Yeah. Would you like one of us to help with that, or is it? It's um, up to you. It's easy enough for us to just, just put it on. If I say us, it's usually Linda that reaches right. out to the. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's that's fine. So just eliminate that. Yeah. Then. And the only thing we gotta do is the cards. We'll, yeah. Right. We'll have to. So if. I think that's in May, right? It was in. I thought it was April. Was it the April. end of April or in May? I don't know. I think remember. it's April. It's April. Okay. Yeah. I think it's the end of April. So, so one we of should have the, signed the cards maybe in March. In March. Yeah. And then we'll do the same um, meals and whatnot. You know, right. So. Yeah, the same thing as we okay. have been doing just it, earlier. I know when <laughs> uh, it was like the week before we were doing ours. And I remember when I was making the last coordination, I just remember thinking to myself, why didn't we do it? Because it was on the news. <laughs> like every day they had some other event coming right. I was like, why didn't we do this mm -hmm. last week yeah. when these kids were doing? I'll tell you exactly what That's a good is. idea. Because we do our own thing, apparently. Yeah. It's in May, because it's the same week as healthcare. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I think it is May. May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. May 4th. So May sign them in April then? Yeah.
And I believe that the RTCC meetings will start to happen on our board meeting days. Isn't that correct? So we will have that September, November, February, and May. Um, so we'll have a somewhat earlier board meeting. Um, a six, oh, we had talked about, right. uh, we haven't decided exactly if that's the way it's going to work, but because there was such poor attendance at the tech center meetings that it would make sense as we are responsible for the tech center anyway we you know we approve their budget etc um, it really behooves us to be more involved um, and really provide a listening ear uh, and feedback to Jason so we decided to incorporate those into our meetings um, there are four required um, tech center meetings um, typically they've been scattered throughout the year September November February and May and so next year we will incorporate them either by starting earlier at 6 or by just starting at 6.30 and having the tech center meeting first and then follow with the OSSD. So we'll plan that. I have to add that to our agenda too, Linda. Or at least somehow to the meeting. Okay. Which months were those? September? September. Yep. November, February, and May. So they have separate agenda? I mean, we'll have to discuss all that. Yeah, we will. Yeah, they have uh, read through the, the law of each and I talked for a little while. They have to serve in a true advisory um, capacity, so anything in terms of um, changes to policy, um, that group needs to be able to have a voice in. Um, and if the board, this board, even though you're the controlling board, goes against um, what the recommendation is of that advisory, group I have to actually submit a letter to the Secretary of Education. Not that it changes anything, but I just have to say, hey, this is, yeah. Well, as I understood it, though, none of the advisory board members have actually attended. So we had one last week, or last oh, month. Did you? Yeah, yeah, we had one. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to continue to invite them and, yeah. and send them the agenda and warn the meeting to, to right. all the other participating schools yeah. and community partners, like VSAC or who, um, mm -hmm. CCV mm -hmm. and, and whatever else. Yeah. But, you know, so that advisory, advisory board will remain. Yep. How many people are uh, voting members for, for if, 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 so if we after have to the after the either. consolidation? Yeah. Can't be too many. Like, I'm going to have to ask Jason to be sure because a, a lot of the sending schools were consolidated, consolidated under White River. Um, so that'll be a Jason question. We'll make sure we ask. Um, one of the more than three. I mean. Well, in Williamstown and Northfield are now consolidated. One. Yeah. Yeah. Although the, they still have their two separate high schools, but they're under one superintendent. Yeah, so, so you know, know I hate to think it's just two, but yeah, because um, it seems like it'd be us, and then it would White be River Northfield Valley. and White River. It's the only it's three, three I can think of. Yeah. So I'll put that down. Plus, as, a um, as far as schools, I think you're right. But then, um, you know, it's CCV, right. and then a few community Are, members right. that are on that advisory board. Right. But they're not necessarily voting members, are they? They were. were. Oh, they were. They're voting members. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's odd. We've definitely never had, we haven't had a quorum in years. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I'll get, I'll get an exact number. The other thing, no. if, if folks are interested, okay. is... Um, Massachusetts by law required advisory committees, um, and it's actually it's got some really good guidelines. Um, uh, they were actually pretty lively meetings. They were a lot of fun uh, when we ran them. So if people are interested, I'll just email that around um, as, as you know, maybe a protocol that we follow when we run the meetings. Well, we should also a ask Jason what he would like from yep. an advisory board. Yep. Um, be good to do something useful to it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, and maybe we can reach out and ask some people to. You know, we would you have? have. <laughs> We've yeah. tried, but no, yeah. I, we should try again. We should try. Yeah. Again. We should definitely try again. There will be cookies. <laughs> There's usually pizza too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like we were talking early, early on, is I think if, if it really gets down to some of the real policy questions, I think you're going to get people that are interested in showing up um, mm -hmm. to be able to have that input because those are things that can tend to develop a good sense of urgency for folks. And I think they yeah. could. It's just. Right now, there's nobody that comes, so you can't put any meat on the agenda yeah. because you only have it. You, you can't vote on it. Yep, I mean, there's nothing <laughs> you can do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So this, we'll put this um, annual agenda, we'll approve it at the next meeting, which should be in August. If anyone else has any other things to add or suggestions to make, um, we can do that via Linda in the next couple of months. It could be interesting, though, to see the minutes change, because then all of us will be here because we're getting here for our board meeting. So you'll have like 10 community members and one board member on the minutes, and people will be like, what happened there? <laughs> Okay, we need to appoint or reappoint our auditor. Do we I, have a? I can give you. A, I can give you a, a little detail. So you guys have used uh, Fothergill, Sagali, and Valley for the last two years now. Um, there, I was actually a sticker shock when I was finding out how much the, the auditors are in the state. So the the first year that we had them, they were at fifty five thousand. The second year was 43,000, and in the coming year, they're estimating about 36,000. Um, it did go out to bid um, at that point in time. Um, apparently, there was a gentleman, CPA, that was being used uh, for a long time who retired. And he was about half the cost of all the rest, but these guys yeah. were the, the, the low bidders um, when it went out to bid. Um, one of the reasons this, that the... Um, the cost is going down is because of the consolidation. When you originally consolidated, they had to look at a lot more um, details. They had to look at a lot more at the financials to make sure that everything was coming together the way that it was supposed to. Um, so the cost will continue to decrease as they get more accustomed that now that we've transitioned over, they kind of know us, they, they know what they're looking for. Um, so you're looking at about 36,000. The recommendation, it's a board decision, but the recommendation from Robin is to stay with the same. Would there be any necessarily reason of how long you should stay with a CPA like that? Should we, you know, go out to bid again in another two years or something like that? Um, it, remember, they're, they're helping you serve your oversight function. Right. So if you feel that you're getting the information that you need and as a board and they're responsive to you, um, I would say no, unless um, probably what should happen is it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to every couple of years, if you're sticking with the same one, to at least go out to bid just to make sure that what they're charging is in line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's no reason right now to believe that it's not. Um, right. But that would be my, my suggestion. So as a board, you know, are you getting what you need? Are they giving you the information? Um, I know over the years when we had the other gentleman, we went out to bid, and he was so far under, we just like, oh, no, we're staying here. Yeah, Robin said he was like half. Yeah. He was. Uh, yep. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions or concerns about the auditor's or the auditor's report that we received this year? I mean, they, they picked up picked up on, on two pieces that, that we've got to work on, which is good. That's their, mm -hmm. their That's job. Cool. So. I just think it would be helpful to have that material prior to that meeting with the auditors to be able to review it and to be able to come a little more um, prepared to ask questions or to press any issues that may be of concern. That's a good point. We should suggest that we do have their reports before the meeting. The other piece, just throwing it out there as part of the discussion, is that, you know, I know that folks were hoping to get those reports earlier in the year. That's one of the things that could happen if you do a bidding process is you could state when you expect it done right. as part of the bidding process and just see if there's anybody out there who can who can manage that. I mean, that is a possibility. What are the constraints as far as when our financials are all ready? Do, does it depend on the budget process or anything like that when they actually can do the audit? Uh, they typically, remember, they're looking at the year behind. Mm -hmm. um, so they typically come in right off of the bat, you know, into September. In early fall, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you've got time. So there shouldn't be any constraints then. No. Do, do we want a, the report earlier? Well, I would suggest it, just in that you're waiting a long time. If there was an issue, I didn't realize they right. came in in September and we heard from them May. just when we were out in Brookfield. Right. right. I mean, that's right. a long time. So if there was an issue or concern, not to say it wasn't being responded to by the business office, but I would imagine your board should be aware of that. Yeah. And like I said, their, their big constraint was the um, folks I think were looking for April, which is, you know, had heavy tax season. Um, there, were, there were two months for tax seasons. There's corporate tax and then there's the, yeah, which was the reason that it was So delayed. could they have done it earlier? Could they have done it in, they December. said September is when they came, so could they have done it in November or December? I don't think so, because we asked, we asked. Yeah, I remember you asking. Time. Yeah. Nothing, no. 
Nope. We originally had it on the agenda in maybe February or something, mm -hmm. quite early. early. So, I mean, we could ask them that question, whether we could have it, whether they would be prepared to present it, say, in January. Sir, $36,000, you think they would? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. yeah, that would bother me. Um, I'm happy. I'm happy to ask. I mean, you don't necessarily have to make a decision right now. Um, what if, well, it, I mean, our next meeting is yeah, in August, August which is a little late. Yeah. So, how do we want to handle this? Well, couldn't it be an ask, and then Lane, you could email us, and we could do a board, you know, resolution or a vote, whatever, to say we would like it on December first. Or I'm I'm imagining that all the other schools are waiting that long yeah. Yeah. to get that information. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, the, I'm we can't. The, 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 any kind of vote that you do would have to be public. Um, yeah, typically, this was when we got. We've always gotten it. Well, well, what we what you might be able to do is that we can ask and say, hey, we'd like it this month, and then if they're unable to provide it, you know, maybe we're locked in for you, but then that's the cue that it's time to go out to bid. Um, doesn't guarantee that if you go out to bid, somebody's going to be able to do sure, it. But in the bidding process, you know, you put in the dates when you expect the work to be done. And so... Do we want to appoint the auditor for this year and request that maybe we get the report earlier? Mm -hmm. What month are you looking for? October, November. I mean, ideally it would be like November because th that's when we're actually talking about the next budget. budget. Right. And so ideally it would be before we come up with the next budget in case there was something that was glaring that needs to be addressed. Um, Okay. I, I think that would be ideal, <laughs> but if they're coming in September, mm -hmm. I don't know how long it seemed to hurt. Probably three, three months, and September, October, there's... November. November might, December might be doable. November December? Might be tight. Yeah. And if there's some reason why this doesn't make any sense to them at all, well, then they can explain. Okay. So November, we'll say November, December folks are comfortable. Mm -hmm. Time frame, and we'll get a response from them. And an explanation if not. And I think... Do you guys, are you talking about the written report? I'm not sure when, I don't know how long Robin had those before, do you know? Or when I think we got she, them, Teresa right? could come, actually. So I think there's two different things. When mm -hmm. Teresa's not if available. If she writes an executive report, then I'm, I'm comfortable with that being available as soon as possible. Right. right? Whatever that is. But if, if she can't meet until May, I'm okay That's with fine that. Too. Okay. An executive report? Okay. I mean, I don't need to talk to her if I can get an executive You're report right. read. That's what I wonder. Perfect. Yeah, they should be able to produce at least a summary of findings at that point in time, even though they don't have the full document done. Well, that's okay. I mean, yeah. that gives us something to work with. Yep. Easy enough. Do we need to vote to appoint the auditor? Probably. Okay, do I have a motion to appoint Father Gill, Siegel, Father Gill, Siegel, and... Is it written somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the current yeah. auditor <laughs> to another year's audit. Do I have a motion? Here. So moved. Father Gill, Siegel, and Val Val Valley. Valley. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. All those... In favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and then we'll see when we can get that report. So, next, we've got um, we need to accept the 2.7 report, which was enclosed in last month's agenda. Um, and we talked about it and had a month to review, read it over. Um, Lane, last time, at last meeting, answered question. Did anyone have any further questions on 2.7? And I have a motion to approve Gale 2.7 as written. So moved. A second? I'll second that. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so 2.7 is approved.
Next, we have this facilities plan update, which is a closed here. Yes, yeah, Jimmy, that show don't have it in color. I do have a colored copy if folks want to see, but it comes in color in the electronic mm -hmm. when you get it. So I'll talk a little bit about this because it's it's kind of in transition. Um, and we did do our some direct observations, which I thought was good. Um, basically, there are items that are completed that have the yellow highlighting on them. Um, the reason that those are in there, those are ones that were actually taken off the report because they had been completed a while back, even up to a year ago. The reason I put them back in there was to do the direct observation, was to actually go out and check and make sure the work was done. So that's why you're seeing my, my initials on there. Um, so there aren't a lot of dollar amounts. I didn't have them go back and track all that down and put it in, but I at least wanted to make darn sure that, you know, that, that work had actually been completed. Um, if you see dollar amounts in the estimated column, um, that indicates that the estimates are physically in hand from a vendor. In most cases, so if you look at the, the very top, um, top of the report, you know, you've got the, the, the Brookfield updates the facilities to meet state requirements for preschool, 25,000. What that means is that we actually have those estimates in hand. If the board would like them, we can supply them at any time. In most cases, especially if it's over 15,000, there's going to be at least three um, estimates uh, that we can hand you. We can talk about why we chose one over the other. Um, when the dollar amounts are in the final cost column, that means that we have the final bill. Um, and it's at that point in time that, that I would go out and do the, the direct observations and then my initials go in if I've seen it um, or if Robin is looking out there, her initials uh, can go in that, in that space as well. Um, questions um, on any of the parts and pieces that we pull out my car copy because my poor old eyes. So I do have a question yeah. and I'm sorry because I am a finance girl. So. Um, I do think it's interesting that we know on here, thank you for going out and checking and making sure things are completed, but there's not the final cost. So um, I would assume, if that was the case, that we then used internal intelligence to create that and we did not track salary or parts. But if we didn't, and there was actually an external vendor that came in, why would we not know what we, that? We do. These are, are things that were done and gone in front of the board with dollars and whatnot over a year ago. Okay. I can go I'm back. I'm sorry. I just, I didn't, I didn't want them to recreate, but what I wanted to do was to add in that separate piece, which was the direct observation okay. piece. I'm happy to do that. It will take them some time to. No, I didn't know yeah. it was that long ago to, yeah. to say Yeah, some that. of these are so. from like the, from like lap. Uh, summer a year ago. Okay. Yeah. So what we did is we I kind of went back through, pulled everything else up as part of the tours, and said, let's go take a look okay. and make sure that those things are actually here and that the work was done. So well, I certainly the, think moving forward that would be, I mean, in my opinion, something an estimate and a final cost yep. that should certainly be documented for us to see. Yeah. Now that well, that was part of the question. So. And again, it depends how intensive you want, how much time you want to take for facilities. If you want them, here are all the estimates for the, the first column. So if, if people would just want to see models, what they look like. Mm -hmm. Do you want details every time? Or if there are things that you're really concerned about, you know, do you want to say, hey, we mm -hmm. want to see that? You want to, or you can spot check, or we want to see this one or this one for the next, mm -hmm. next time around. Um, that's the other possibility. Um, but for them to copy all the because they, like I said, in lots of cases are getting multiple estimates and whatnot. It would take quite a bit of time for a body to. Yeah. That's a discussion for the, for the board. Just tell me what you want. I mean, I, from my standpoint, I, if we don't have trust that, that these are the right estimates, I mean, I, you know, we have other problems then at that point. I, I, at least I don't think it's worth, you know, I, I think we need, as, as an oversight board, I don't think we need to know that. See those. And my initials are on there, so if you think something is funny, yeah. you're holding me accountable for, Got it. for not doing it. So the other piece, um, I had written up a kind of a two-page two protocol uh, for how they enter data into this. Um, when projects are completed, after it's shown up in a board report once, those projects are then removed from the list so that it's not confusing, mm -hmm. um, just so folks know. So all these ones that are completed that have been signed off on, um, have got the initials on it from the direct observation, those will be removed from this report the next time you see it. 
uh, make space for new stuff and so it doesn't get too confusing. But these reports are part of the record, so they're always, the old ones are always accessible. So really, in the long run, if you are going, if you, if something needs to be redone, you can look back through the completed things and say, okay, this was, this was done on this date, here's all the backup documentation yep. for it, here's the vendor that, pers that did this, so then we can go back to the vendor. Yep. You have everything more organized that way. Yep. Probably was to begin with, but it went in a list like this. Yeah, maybe. especially with warranties and stuff. Yeah, yeah, maybe it helps. I don't know. <laughs> Is there anything particular we should notice about this report or something you want us to know? Um, I think, I mean, a lot of it was meant to try to keep things simple. Um, so as, as folks are going through, like in some cases here, there were funds that were requ requested for some things that were denied. Um, a lot of the stuff was, we're at the end of the year, so there are the, is the surplus monies. Yeah. Um, so the ones that are in orange just means, hey, of all the, of all the priorities that we've got, that wasn't at the top of the list. You know, we're, we're, we're using those fun, funds elsewhere to, to support facilities. Um, and we can talk in a little bit more detail on, on some of the other things like Raven and whatnot. Um, we'll talk about the wood chip boiler and, you know, we're ready to move on from the report uh, that, are, that are part of the facilities piece. But I think it's, it's is it usable? I get the question is for the board. Is this usable for for the board? Um, does it get at that that piece that, that I think for years, you know, kind of was, was missing, which was that somebody actually had the eye on this stuff mm -hmm. to see was it actually purchased or the work was the work actually done? Um, and then, you know, we're, we're being very good about making sure we've got all the backup um, documentation again. That's one of the requirements. They do not put it on here unless they've got the backup docs to go with it. And that wasn't being done before? You tell me, and, the, and, and I don't mean that to, 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 to turn it around. Um, one of the things that I did notice, and of course I only looked at one or two of the reports, like you're gonna get the surplus request, or excuse me, reserve request for me today for two school buses and for the work on the paving. Um, from what I saw in the old days when you got those reports, there was no estimate attached to them. You will have, you have, esti you have estimates. We usually had estimates on, in in the chart like this. But, yeah, but I'm, I'm talking and, about the actual yeah. estimate from the vendor so that if I'm requesting 171000 from reserve funds, I've got the vendor document attached mm -hmm. to it so that you can see I'm not pulling that right. number out of my That's hiding. That's true. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, that we that, that we I never saw. That. So you're going to... Brent might have seen that from... Yeah, yeah. but you're going you're to see that tonight. It is attached to those reserve requests. Okay. Um, and that's part of the change is now you know you know, on the day-to-day -day basis that you know, it's all based in something. Right. There's a reason for those requests. Like I said, the reports, the old reports that I saw from the, the old facilities director, there were a lot of requests from reserves, but there was nothing attached to it. It was just that, that request form yeah. that they would hand fill out. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I don't even remember seeing this, but I was assuming Brent was following up with it and doing that part. Yeah. And, you know, if, uh, without going into a lot of detail, I mean, if he's just checking the paperwork that's coming in, um, or checking with Robin to see, yeah, did the paperwork come on, in on this? Um, if somebody's just falsely generating the paperwork, it's going to look like it came in and it was paid for by a vendor. And, yeah. So this will this will help avoid that, I think. Are you comfortable with it? Because um, ultimately, you're the one who's. I am. It's going to take. Uh, we're. It's. It, it's adding a little bit, bit of work, but it was kind of fun to drive around and see all the parts and pieces that we talked about <laughs> so many times. Um, so I've got a real good understanding of a lot of the internal workings of the facilities now, which is actually kind of cool. But um, no, I actually think it is. Um, it'll take the facilities crew, you know, a little bit of time to adjust. Um, to the extra documentation in the report because they're really good facilities folks, but you know, Excel skills are not. So that, that, that's that's the that's the hardest part, yeah. and then making sure that they keep up on it and not you know rush it you know the week before. Yeah. So it's just getting into a routine, I guess. But no, I'm 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 very happy with it, and uh, you know, especially uh, you know pulling the estimates from them. Because um, they'd be pulling the wool over your eyes yep. if they were sending stuff in and saying, hey, I need reserve funds for this. And yep. 
no, and just now that. you've got a process in place that's holding them, that's saying, yes, they actually do. I mean, and not only somebody could always fudge a yeah. estimate, but I mean, but we're, not, we're not, we're not making it easy and we got a safety net there to, yeah. to catch them up. You know, it was actually kind of fun. Like even, you know, last year I would have taken people's word for it because I, because I trust them. But you know, this year, you know, Jason, I, I need a new truck for the, the tech center. You know, can we, can we do that out of uh, the tech center surplus? And so, yeah, well, let me see the old truck. <laughs> so he went out and he showed me all the, the big holes in the floor and the, 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 the back end all rusted out and actually the th poor thing didn't look like it had even been running for the Lord knows how many years because it was so bad off so yeah so it, it's good to actually it's a good thing uh, but then it, it also I can I can be very impassioned now too about really going going for the money when they're asking for because I know how bad things are for some of the things they're asking for you know, it's one thing to hear and it's another thing to actually physically see it so. Okay, thanks for that revised facilities plan update. Mm -hmm. I like the way um, the estimates are included yes. and the money money line too. So do we have a legislative update that you want to pass on? or? Uh, yeah, uh, do you want to talk on Raven first since we're on facilities or do you want to sure. skip over? No, I didn't um, know that. I didn't notice that here, but of course yeah. it's a... Yep. So actually, it's the, the Raven piece, so where they're at right now, they've got the three bids in on the, the demolition. Um, so the hope is they're going to accept one. They're actually coming in much less than, than we thought. They're in the $30,000-ish range, which is awesome. Um, the hope is, is that after the July 4th holiday, you know, the vendor's chosen that blade's on the ground and that, that building is coming down. It should take two to three days to, to take it down. Um, on the construction side of things, um, that is currently out to bid. We've got one bid in so far. Um, we've got to get at least three um, to meet the state bidding um, process requirements. Um, we may not get them. We've actually started to reach out to people to say, hey, do you want to bid on this? Mm -hmm. um, because if we do that and they say no, then we can um, fill, for, fill in for a waiver with the state for the, for the other two bidders. Um, we have a moving company that's going to be coming out and doing the move of the, the real heavy expensive equipment that's there. You may have seen and we've got the storage pods that are in place. There's two over by the old Raven building. Some of the smaller stuff, um, the Raven staff felt that they wanted to move it themselves, so they're going to put it in the pods. The pods will be moved over. They'll, they'll unload it. Um, there is a large pod that's by the new building, and that's for overflow. Um, so they're actually going through getting rid of a lot of um, old broken equipment that's been collecting for years. Um, the stuff that they're undecided on may sit in that overflow container for a while until they decide if they're going to use it or not. Um, the other piece that kind of came up during the work um, was there were a couple hundred gallons of hazardous waste um, in barrels in there. Some of the barrels had been there since we actually received the building. Um, so they guaranteed me that you know that at least the barrels and stuff were in good condition. They weren't leaking. There was n nothing coming out of them. They think most of it um, is probably either just used motor oil or part cleaning fluid. Um, but we did have the the crew come out today um, to start removing it. That uh, does the cleanup of the, the the chemicals from the science lab. And we're putting a plan in place to not keep that Sorry. stuff forever. Yep. Ever. Yeah. Well, that that that's what what was interesting <laughs> is like I said. So a good chunk of it they didn't generate it was there when we received the building that's so interesting yeah so it's it's a it's a yearly when the um we talked about it when the the crew comes out to to clean out the science labs mm -hmm. um, they'll they'll pick up that at the same time they don't really generate a lot um, themselves except for a little bit of used oil yeah so but it's um, never good to keep around yep so the old building, the disconnect is happening on Friday. Um, Consolidated Wireless will be there, Green Mountain Power. Um, the propane company will be out to disconnect the building to get ready for the demolition. Um, there is one problem, however, and they've been trying to work with the town. They have no idea where the water inlet and outlet is for the building. So they've been doing a lot of work searching around to find where that is so that they can cap it off because it needs to be capped off before they can start digging. Um, so I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, the old command center that was in the what will be the new Raven building that has been moved over to RES. Um, it is pretty much up and running, um, so we, it's, it's a backup command center that, that, that uh, the old facilities director had created. Um, there are still a couple of the monitors that need to be installed, but there's enough of them up there that you can monitor all three right now, that you can monitor all uh, three sites at, at one time if you needed to. 
Um, and then the last piece was something they noticed when they were looking for the water main, um, was that the tech center was built directly on top of the main sewer connection for this part of town. Bummer. So that might explain some uh, things that happened. <laughs> Well, it's just it's it's a matter of how extensive is the work on that. Uh, if work needs to be done, how much of this building do we have to tear up for the folks to be able to get to it? Um, so. <laughs> so it's elementary school in the basement of the A frame. Oh my goodness! I filled the sewage three times when I was in elementary school. Yeah. Although <laughs> it's, I I have a feeling that the that was reason. Memorable reason that they were bringing it up is because it's some work that may have to be done in the next <coughs> five to ten years. Oh, no. At which point in time, obviously, the right thing to do is to reroute the lines around. Uh, but we'll, we'll deal is with that. Is the town bringing that up? No, yeah, well, that, that was part of I Like I said, they were trying to figure out where the water main was coming into the Raven building because they got to cap it off. They couldn't find it. So I think they kind of discovered that when they were oh. looking at things. Oh my God! They built the tech center right on top of it. <laughs> so, well, that's good planning. Yeah. So just uh, yeah. parts and in, in, in pieces there. Um, the wood chip boiler. The first time. So this was a, a question that that came up in the community a number of times. It was part of the walkthroughs. Um, it was a million dollar grant at one time that that put that that thing in there, and it's yeah. So it's it looks brand new. Yeah. Um, the problem with it when we did the inspection and. Um, it was actually Wes, uh, one of our co-facilities directors right now that used to do a lot of the work on it until Mark, Mark took it over, um, is there's the giant metal boiler and there's a firebox on the inside where the wood chips burn. Mm -hmm. Lining the firebox are supposed to be um, insulating bricks mm -hmm. um, because what happens is the heating and cooling over time, the bricks will crack, um, right. they'll need to be replaced and then you replace them out. The real reason that that boiler hasn't been up and running was because, for whatever reason, a choice was made instead of replacing the bricks to save money, is they mixed up a slurry um, as the insulating material. It was kind of like it looks like concrete. They did a really good job and poured it into the firebox. But the problem is, is that after the heating and cooling cycles, and when that started to crack, it's like, well, how do you remove it? It's just like somebody poured concrete in there. And so we've got, instead of doing the fireworks, and so what we've got is we've got a crew coming out to take a look to see what can be managed. You know, is it going to damage things? How badly will it get damaged if that gets removed? And to see if we can get the, the fire bricks in there. Mm -hmm. um, what would be nice um, is to get a, a, a trailer load, get the thing up and, and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Get a trailer load, you know, 16 little load of wood, um, mm -hmm. fill up the hoppers and just having it sit there in case we have an emergency. There's a war, and the cost of oil gets, goes spikes within a, uh, within a couple of weeks. There's a lot of reasons to do it, but it'd be nice to get it up just as a secondary system. So right now we're not using that. Hasn't been used in years, um, but I, as far as we can tell on our our, our visual inspection, that's the reason why. Right. Um, and otherwise, it would be fully functional. Yeah, like I said, I was I was amazed going in there. Um, there's a. They actually back into the, the, the building out here. There's two giant bins. They look like garage doors. They can dump a, dump a 16 wheeler load worth of wood chips in there. Mm -hmm. There's a giant auger system that'll actually pulls it probably at least 50 feet into where the burner is. Um, and it all looks brand new. I mean, it's, it, was, it was incredible equipment, whatever it was. The, the, the issue was that firebox. Now, when they stopped using it, was it because the price of oil dropped or because of that firebox? Now you're getting into the, the, the <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, I don't want to go on record. I can tell you what my impression is. I believe that the, the legitimately the price of oil was high at the time, so everybody in the state was fighting over wood chips, so they didn't have great availability. Um, but I think they're, uh, uh, by the same token, an equal factor in that was they had poured that stuff in there. It was time to replace it. And it was, we didn't quite do it right. It's going to cost a lot to replace it. We don't have the money to do it. Um, so we'll figure out how much it really was, um, how much it really is to get that, get that fixed if we can. Mm. Um, Never hurts to have a backup heating source. No. And it has the capacity to heat this entire building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, it was amazing. There's, it's it's uh, the little ash box on the side. It's probably about the size of half, not this high, but about the size of half, half of this table. 
that they they said you know you can do a whole sixteen wheeler full of, of wood chips and it, you know the ashes are you know easily fit into that whole ash box. It's really like, efficient. Yeah. That's really efficient. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, pretty it's pretty impressive uh, to talk about. So we'll we'll see. There there was a lot of discussion in in and around the town, um, especially with the R three work that was going mm -hmm. on about why that wasn't being used. Right. So that was part of mm -hmm. us taking a look at it. Mm. Um, but interesting, like I said, there's a lot, a lot of cool stuff here. That there, there really is. You go around and get the looks. Any thought of since RES is so close, is this is it big enough to to heat both buildings? Uh, we could ask. I don't believe so. I mean, my my guess is is that they probably figured out what the output was to properly heat this place and built it. Yeah. Um, you know, for the economy of scale, so that you know you weren't you know burning up you know twice as much wood as you as you really needed to for the uh, for what for what you were trying to heat. But we could check. Um, the other piece associated kind of with that, um, since we're kind of talking on facilities, the solar projects. Mm -hmm. So there were a couple of different little solar initiatives that, that we looked at. We've got the final bid in for, for one today, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit with the board just to get a feel for what people are thinking um, and to, to give kind of my opinion. Um, the big thing that kind of killed the solar projects is there's a main circuit down here um, that Green Mountain Power operates. And when you build in a, a solar array, it pumps electricity into that circuit. So Green Mountain Power is saying that we need some pretty expensive equipment to upgrade the circuit here to be able to receive you know, the amount of power a, a, a school-sized uh, array would, would require. Um, so that, that's one of the reasons that those talks died. Um, Jim Miriam from Norwich Solar came out and spoke. Um, his plan is a little bit different um, than you know, the district kind of purchasing our own. Basically, what we would do, um, again, the Green Mountain Power issue is still a, still a problem. They have to, would have to fix the circuit. Um, is basically they would find a buyer who would buy the solar, you know, use our space to put it on, so we would have no upfront cost mm -hmm. to it. Um, we would get a discounted, we'd buy the electricity from them at a discount, and then their big savings comes from the tax because they're a private, private investor, so they, they, they save you know, the 30% uh, in terms of taxes uh, that, they, that they would get for the total cost of the project. Um, my concerns on it, I think it's great. You know, it's no cost. They do all the maintenance. They do all the management. Um, my concerns on it is it's a 25-year agreement for a district that's paying right now about a quarter million a year in electrical, it would save us about 30000 a year. Mm -hmm. And then there's no end game, and by that I mean what happens to all that equipment when the 25 years is up, who's stuck disposing of it. Um, so I love the idea, mm -hmm. but that, again, and that's part of the input from the board, I, I get nervous of that 25 year. Uh, your threshold, and then I also get very nervous about you know when the usable life is up. You know who's who's taking care of all this stuff, right. who's disposing, who's paying for it, um, because that's usually not included in these plans is the disposal. That's a really important piece. Is, is it their equipment though? So they yeah, should they be responsible for for removing and disposal. So. What we could do now, here's here's the catch, um, is that you know they want an agreement by June 28th. The reason being is because legitimately um, part of the reason an investor would do this is to take advantage of that tax break, right? 30% back on the, or maybe it was 40 one time, but 30% back on the the, the the cost of the array, um, you know, um, would, would come out of their taxes over the, the course of the next couple of years. Um, the way the law is around it is that tax break is decreasing. So it starts to decrease uh, after June 30th if you start your project then. So they're saying, well, you know, if we're really going to make this happen at the, the savings that we quoted is, you know, we've got to get an agreement in by, by June 28th. Um, you know, part of the agreement is we could have them put in the agreement at the end, you know, owner takes the equipment off the building. Uh, but again, I don't know what that'll do to the savings. Again, it's 30,000 is a lot of money. Compared to a $19.4 million budget, is it worth the, the longevity? Is it worth, uh, I don't know. I'm not comfortable with it, but I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I worry because it's beyond my time. Mm -hmm. 
and you know, I worry about what kind of headache I might be leaving for somebody else. Maybe perfectly fine. Uh, I don't have enough experience to judge it. It really would have been useful to have Jim come and present it to us. Um, yeah, I can still. I'm sure he's happy to. I can have him him come in. I mean, I literally just got this. We met a month and a half ago. I got this a few days ago. Mm -hmm. So. I think they're scrambling around because that, that June 30th deadline is. But if anybody wants, I can email it around and I can I got a brought a copy with me. Um, like I said, I think I think of all the possible things, ways that, that we potentially looked at for solar, from purchasing our own to purchasing it from somebody who may be putting an array up on the, the old landfill. Um, I think this is probably not a bad way to go and probably provides the most savings. But. I just, he knows our district so well, having served on this board for 10 years or, you know, he's, yep. um, but even, even this, I, I got to find out, um, there are some agreements that the Vermont Superintendents Association and the Vermont School Boards Association have had. Um, it doesn't really need to go out the bid because it's not like we're paying for anything up front, but it seems like there's got to be some sort of, mm -hmm process to choose to, to provide equity in terms of choice amongst the companies that might offer something like this. Uh, I mean, we have, this would be what, how, which number, how many proposals have we had from people just? Uh, of, of this business model for solar, this is well, only one. Solar this is in one. general. Um, we've got, had Adam Wiggett come in, right. but his was for right. looking at actually putting it on the building. We right. would buy it and own it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other one was um, we went out took a look at the proposal from Green Lantern mm -hmm. um, Solar, right. who is it's kind of a similar to this, mm -hmm. but um, we, we wouldn't get as much of a discount um, because they're not putting it up on our property. Right. Right. There's that. There's that aspect of it too. We're just we're just we're just reaping the 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 lower cost of the electricity. Their profit from the tax incentive wouldn't be bundled into the one that's coming from Green Lantern Solar, is my understanding. Whereas we'd get a little bit of a a, a, a benefit from having it on our buildings. Um, what I was wondering is having three separate proposals. You might be want to ask if that counts as. Yeah, I don't even know if we have to. Well, um, that's that's part of that. I got we got to talk with if people are interested the the folks the folks at the state. Um, you know, I, I don't feel like we have anywhere near um, the information. Yeah, yeah. That I don't we need either. to do it by jet June twenty eighth. Yeah, and I've been I've been looking at it for six months. So I'm I'm kind of conversant with things, but I'm still not. Again, the the, the piece that leaves me the 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 shyest about it is just the, it's the time frame. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking the Green Lantern was 20 years, this is 25. Mm -hmm. I mean, should we reach out to Norwich Solar Jim and uh, see if he'd be willing to present at the August meeting? Yeah. And, you know, I don't whether maybe it's not worth their while or ours if it's past this July 1st deadline. I yeah. don't know. But, I think you know, we, we simply can't move, I don't it's think, on yeah. it um, without enough, without more information. Yeah. Um, and getting, well, getting, it's more agreeing, it keeps saying, well, it's not binding, and it's like, eh, no further, because mm -hmm. the, the problem is, is that the second that we sign something like this, it's wrapped around a specific vendor, and so kind of, you know, if we move forward, then we're kind of, you know, not that this wouldn't necessarily be the best, but it seems like, you know, mm -hmm. right. we're, we're locking district assets technically, you know, the buildings themselves for 25 years, it seems like there should be more than just looking at one group. Um, but I'm happy to have him come in in August and kind of kind of talk. What, what, what's the consensus among everyone else? Well, it seems like there's a lot of issues with this. And then just sort of even thinking about, well, you know, there's, there's a financial reason to do it. There's an environmental reason to do it, but maybe not everybody's on board with an environmental reason to do it. Um, and then we're talking about this roof, right? So we need to know about the condition of the roof and because it seems to me with these building roofs after a while, <coughs> they need replacement. So where are we years. in that cycle? Yeah. Uh, so if they don't want to install the, the solar panels the and have then or <laughs> on a roof that needs to be replaced. Yeah. Right. So the, the roof did this roof. Yeah, the roofs are good, good for, for about 20 years. 
Um, you know, you do get some protection if they do a good job of putting the panels up there, but then you got to figure out, you know, this is not a metal roof. There's no seams to clamp things to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how many holes are they going to be putting in the rubber coating mm -hmm. that's up there? And, um, you know, the I ideal right. place... What kind of guarantee do we good. have it starts <laughs> to leak? Yeah, and, and the environmental impact is, is something that I don't think has been studied yet um, because when these panels come offline and need to be disposed of because they degrade. You know, they, they lose 1% or so of their generating capability every year that goes right. by. When they degrade and they need to be thrown out, what happens to them? Right. Know, I don't think right. there's... So that, right, so that's the whole thing. Yeah. So it's a, it's a huge, huge question. For what it's worth, I remember we had a discussion about solar with Brent as well. I don't remember if it was in a meeting or if it was a one-on-one, -on -one, but he had the same, everything that you're saying right now mm -hmm. is the exact same thing that he said. Cool. He said, <laughs> he said 25 years is not something that the school district should lock up. Uh, it, it shouldn't go on the roofs because of the roof. Mm -hmm. they, they will damage the roof in the process yeah. of doing it. Inadvertently, something's going to get damaged, and then we'll be on the line of trying to fix that roof. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I'm happy to listen to Jim and, and listen to everything, but that's two superintendents in a row <laughs> looking at information from yeah. different vendors and coming to the same conclusions at different times that I, I don't know. I, <laughs> if he he's hesitant, I'm thinking I don't want to push. <laughs> yeah, well, again, it's the, it's the time frame. It's the, you know, if we, if we could have it out or they had to remove it or, you know, even, even the, it's, it's also the amount of savings versus that. You know, thirty thousand a year. Yeah, yeah he's got it, he's got it increasing as the cost of electricity goes goes up. You know, yeah, if it goes up as mm -hmm. predicted, right. um, and then you know it's it's converted to so. You know, it's yeah. this you know a yeah. quarter million dollar electrical bill, thirty thousand savings for a twenty five year commitment with other yeah. possible ramifications. Hey, I've got you guys can have if you want. I just wanted to list. So, um, what's your the board's pleasure on this. So what's the, mo I guess, and I'm probably coming into this late, but what's the motivation for this? I mean, is this just, again, because... It was unsolicited. Okay. Somebody <laughs> came and said... I th think the R3 process generated talk. So I just wonder, though, is there benefit? Um, it, obviously, there's concerns among this board. There's concerns among the superintendent. Um, would there not? Would we not be better served to wait to see the progress of R three, and to be a part of that local movement, and to show the collaboration between that and the schools? Yeah. R um, three was kind of a. They're, they're continuing some of the groups are, but it was a big one year kind of push to get oh. things going, and then those groups are supposed to take take off, um, and they are continuing to meet, especially the energy um, group. Um, but the bigger concern as well, well as for me, is you know when is Green Mountain Power committed to fixing that grid? Mm -hmm. And reading Jim's proposal, kind of what it's stating is that you know we have some some power and some push with Green Mountain Power to get them to to make that change to the circuit here, that expensive change. But the way that it's written, it sounds like it's actually coming out, coming from the people mm -hmm. that are investing in solar in the area. So Green Mountain Power isn't paying for it. It's the whoever in the area is trying mm -hmm. to invest in solar. They're going to add a charge onto them. To Great. Well, but I almost wonder: are there is the money better Property spent grant. on doing more efficiency okay. projects within the building? Right? Mm -hmm. And I think about you know, like right now, we're changing over to all LED lighting. Yep. And I mean, we've been able to clearly show the decline in our electric bill. And is there a way to just educate kids and the staff on turning off lights and, mm -hmm. you know, how you power down a computer? And, I mean, is there better ways to maybe teach lifelong lessons instead of putting solar panels on the roof? Yeah. And they've, uh, Vermont, Efficiency Vermont has come through. They're ready to yeah. do kind of another mm -hmm. survey. So they've done a lot of those upgrades already. So we've, we have capitalized on those savings. Um, I mean, a lot of the discussions in terms of electrical right now comes down to basic protocols. Um, why is there a refrigerator in every classroom? Those are expensive to run if you got one in every classroom. Yeah, why know? is there even the little portable ones? Why do we have you know 40, 40 um, you know microwaves out there that are going to blow the circuit anyway? If you got too many of them running, I mean those are things that we're, we're already talking about. Um, you know, you, everybody has a faculty room. You've got the one big refrigerator there. It should be enough, you know, unless you're a science lab or something, and you've, you've got the, you've got the means for it. 
So th those are the other things that can be pursued. Um, I think there's benefit in trying to change habits. Yeah. More so. Yeah. So it sounds to me like the consensus that will table this and maybe not pick it up, you know, until something I'm gonna keep changes. I'm gonna keep looking at things. Yeah. I'm gonna get real excited to dig in really deep. Um, if Green Mountain Power changes that, mm -hmm. if that circuit changes, but I, I don't want to be subsidizing that. That's the other piece, um, and I have a feeling that that sounds like it's a part part of you know the project. You know. Okay, so let's. We don't need to plan for anything in August. We'll just table this for now and see what happens in the future around solar. Yep. Um, really we are definitely running behind our time, <laughs> uh, the time allotted, but um, legislative update, was there anything you wanted to uh, talk about as far as that goes? Uh, the lead, through the, actually, of all the ones that kind of have been through the General Assembly, probably the lead is the biggest, and then um, the workforce development. So with the lead, it did, did pass both. Um, there is a TAP inventory survey that's due June 28th. In other words, um, the facilities managers have to go in and tell them all the taps that might be accessible for water across the district. Uh, they're doing that so that they know the number of testing kits to send us. Uh, they did decide on a four parts per billion threshold. Um, any hits above that are gonna have to be remediated. Um, the state will reimburse up to a certain amount to replace fixtures. Um, and whether or not those dollars are well aligned to what the actual cost is, it does not appear to be so. Um, now the other part of this is when we start doing the testing, so you know we've got all the all the access points that have to be tested. They're supposed to, it's being done by the Department of Health, they're supposed to be sending us out of rotation, you know, you're not supposed to do them all, you know, in the same week. Um, you know, you're going to work on this building, this part of the building first, and, and work your way through. Um, so they're supposed to give us, a, you know, that, that rotation, how we're supposed to do that. But we're also supposed to be putting out notifications once the testing starts, um, five days before each round of tests, that it's happening um, to keep, keep the, the, the town in the loop. By the way, since we're on it, the, the lead testing at Brookfield is clear and has been clear for a while. Um, so the water is usable. It still has a little bit of the salinity issues. Um, what I've got them doing is they're doing uh, full salinity testing um, every six months um, for the next year and a half because what we want to see is if those their, the levels are significantly lower um, than they were before we did a little bit of work on that well. Um, but what we want to see if, is if the ions, right, their charged ions are just sticking to the, the bedrock that's down there that's containing the water, and if over the course of time of using the water, if the salinity levels are going down, right? It may take some time to literally years to wash through those rocks and clean out all the, the, the stuff that was in there. So that every six months for a year and a half should give us an idea to see what's happening with those salinity levels. If they're not going down, if they're staying um, steady state, it means two things. Um, it means we probably can't even drill a new well there because it's just the aquifer. Um, and we'll have to either just keep uh, bringing in the bottled water for the, the, the drinking portion of it, or we'll have to look at a, a, a reverse osmosis system to put it in instead of a well. Um, so in the, you know, right now, kind of on hold just to see what happens with the testing over the course of time. Uh, the other one, which was interesting with uh, Jason here tonight, um, workforce development bill. Um, they, part of that, H-533, um, is requiring a study to be done that's due in January of 2020 um, to see if it's possible to integrate state college programs into technical centers. In other words, it looks like potentially having technical centers take over some associate's degrees. Really? That'd be interesting. So, well, it's, it's a question, is it to shut down the colleges or what's, it was unclear in kind of reading through what the motivation is, but it would literally, you know, Vermont Tech, a lot of its associate's degrees up here. Well, it's, it's the only state college that has the associate's degree. Really? I believe. Well, CCB. Well, CCB. CCB. CCB, yeah. yeah. But, but as far as technical degrees. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but they're looking that that's, so they're not saying it has to happen, but they want to study on the feasibility of it by 2020. Mm -hmm. And that means that it's probably because they want to bring it up in the next legislative session, decide if they want to make some changes mm -hmm. to it. So I thought that was actually kind of interesting. Space would be, I mean, I, I can't understand how they could incorporate 
we just don't have the space. Right, associate's uh, degree. That's a two-year degree. That's a, that's a two-year degree. You've got the the kids are in the tech center, you know, juniors. Yes. So maybe they're starting their associate's degree as a junior. Oh, they have to finish their high school requirements. One would think, but mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, it's we'll, just we'll it's, know. I threw it out there just because it was. I that was one that hadn't been on the radar. It hadn't shown up anywhere, and it just it popped up in the last you know part of the session. It's like oh, it's kind of neat. Where did that come from? It's yeah. weird. So yeah. Was, first, I heard of it. It's the legislature. All right. So we have a number of things on the consent agenda. I would like to um, approve them as a slate. So we've got this teacher contract, which is a point four art uh, replacement for the elementary schools. We need to approve the minutes from um, our OSSD meeting, our last regular schedule scheduled meeting, um, which happened at Brookfield. And the minutes are in our packet. We also have to approve the minutes from um, the special meeting, which was held at the end of May. That was just approving future contracts. Mm -hmm. We have to approve a local education agency plan, um, which form is enclosed. We should each look at that. Um, we have to approve arbitrage. You want to explain what arbitrage is to those who do not know it, and yeah. maybe even the local education agency plan? So local education agency plan, um, we get uh, IDEA, so Individuals with Disabilities in Education Act um, funding. Um, it's usually used to provide direct services to, to students with disabilities. Um, it's a form that's required to the board to sign in terms of assurances that we're going to use the money the way that we're supposed to use it um, so that they'll grant the money to us. Um, so it's, it's a step in that process. Um, the arbitrage, I, we talked a little bit about it um, at the, the last meeting. Um, our new fiscal year starts in July. We don't get the first round of the new uh, tax money from the, 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 the state until October. So we need funds to carry us over until the tax money starts to roll in significant mm -hmm. enough quantities to, to provide for our, our, for our operations. So that's what the arbitrage is. It's, it's uh, the board agreeing that you know, we're, we're able to go out and borrow those funds. Um, Robin looked at um, four or five different banks. Um, her recommendation is to stay uh, with Community Bank. Um, they actually have the lowest uh, loan rate. Um, so I can read this for you really quick. Um, after reviewing the tax anticipation bid results, I recommend the OSSD school board approve the borrowing from the community bank of $3,145,000 at a rate of 2.75% uh, for the period of July 1st through June 30th. Now here's the interesting part. We don't have to spend all that money at once. That's to keep us operating until, you know. Um, and to invest with community bank at the rate of 3.45%. Mm -hmm. So the money that we haven't spent while we're waiting to spend it, we can invest at a higher rate than we're actually borrowing it for, mm -hmm. which is interesting under the laws in, in Vermont. That was kind of cool to learn about. Um, OSSD board as part of this also needs to approve the RTCC borrowing from the community bank, right? Had the best rates um, under the same conditions for them. It's a half million to keep them going. Um, so again, 2.75% uh, uh, for the borrowing weight, and then they're able to invest it at 3.45% that's guaranteed. And it's also, um, you know, it doesn't, there's, there's no risk on it, which is kind of cool. So, so um, do pe does anyone have questions on any of those portions of the, I, I think we need to approve those five items for our consent agenda because we'll, the others we'll have to talk about in a little further detail. So are there any questions, concerns, comments about the minutes or anything else that's uh, in this five parts of the, that we're going to vote on right now? No? Okay, so do I have a motion to approve these first five items of the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the first five portions of the consent agenda. A second? A second. All those in favor of approving this? Uh, aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Okay, so the, those are approved. The next, you can see we have the board review and acceptance of the district continuous improvement plan. So this was actually approved by the board a year ago. Um, what the district did, continuous improvement plan plays into um, is it's how we justify to the state um, 
the consolidated federal programs funds that we see, so Title I and Title II. Um, it has you go and do an analysis. A lot of that we kind of did together um, in October. Um, so a lot of the, the, the data that was pulled from this um, came from the ENDS report. Um, and it's just been updated with uh, the 2018 data. Um, so it's the same as, as the previous year. It's been updated with the, the minor changes um, because of the 2018 data. Um, once the board approve it, approves it, it goes in under the assurances page for the Consolidated Federal Programs just to say the board has approved the CIP. Um, actually, I don't even think the board has to. It just looks good if you do. Uh, but what this is really playing into for that, those title funding, those are funds that are meant to serve um, underprivileged students, um, students of poverty. Um, in our case, because our district has such a high percentage of that, um, those funds are usable um, across all the schools in the district as a whole. Um, and it focuses primarily on the, the two things that No Child Left Behind was worried about was in improving mathematics and, and ELA. Um, so it talks about, you know, have you gone to the data? Um, have you, you, you taken a look at what that's telling you? Um, how does that apply to these, these quality factors um, that we're, we're, we're concerned about in the state of Vermont and that we want you to use the federal funds for? So that's what you see, you know, academic proficiency, safe, healthy schools, high quality staffing. Uh, are some of the things that we're, we're trying to address based upon what we discovered in the needs in the data analysis review. Um, I can go to in much detail as you want. Um, for this, but like I said, this was approved by the board uh, a year ago. Does anyone have any questions about it? I have a motion to approve the CIP. So moved. A second? Second. All those in favor? of approving the continuous improvement plan? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next on the consent agenda is the transportation reserve funds. So that is a form in the packet. Um, kind of describes it on the front and on the back is the actual the, 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 the bid, um, the winning bid that we decided to go with. Um, what this is for is that money was traditionally put into the transportation reserve fund so that the two oldest buses every year would be replaced. Um, and that's what we're seeking to do is to replace the two oldest buses of the 15 that we've got in the fleet. Um, it went out to bid to three places. This was actually the low bidder, um, in what, which was one of the reasons that it was chosen. But in addition to that, they were also able to supply some of the extra um, accessories for the bus um, that, that are needed for this area. Um, they've got a little bit better traction um, control on them. They've got an enhanced heating system for the engine for the cold days. Um, they come pre-wired so that our camera systems that we use on the, the other buses can, can be attached. Um, so this was, was the best overall deal. So the 71 uh, passenger bus, a um, little over 85,000 apiece. We're looking for two of them. And again, historically, um, that's what that, that fund has been used for, is every year we, we replace the oldest two. We didn't do it last year, by the way, because we bought two new buses just for the extra students that we had come into the school. Um, so we have not replaced any of the old ones in two years. Any questions? So you went out and checked to make sure we actually needed to replace the old one? Yeah, one of them. It's, it's amazing. They, they're, it's actually not a lot of miles for buses. They're both over 100,000. Um, they get beat to heck on the back roads mm -hmm. um, here. Um, one of them has enough rust and holes in it that the fumes are coming up through the back. Um, so it, it is needed. What's really sad about, about it is, um, you know, if you try to get trade-ins and whatnot on them, they're not worth a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get four or 5,000 for, for, right. for the old buses because somebody wants one for, uh, you know, to fix up and use as a camper or something, you're, you're lucky. Um, but, yeah. So do I have a motion to approve the transportation reserve funds for these two buses? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, facility reserve funds. So um, on the back um, is the 
uh, magnitude estimate from Du Bois and King. Um, and what this is for is it's actually for three things. Um, it's for the resurfacing of all the pavement, finishing up the job that was done. It looks like it was done in three pieces. Uh, originally, they started over by the central office. They've done this part of the parking lot. It's to resurface the remainder of the parking lot all the way around the rest of the building. So that's one chunk of it. That's the 170000 And then the main loading dock for this building is in horrible disrepair. Uh, they did come in and try to decide, could it be repaired? Did it need to be replaced? They basically said, yeah, we can repair it, but you're going to have to probably replace it in eight years if we do. Um, so it's an additional 40000 um, for the replacement. Um, it is a big project, um, so there's another 12000 that is in there um, for a company to come in and be the project manager. So they make sure that you've got the contractors, the contractors are here when they're supposed to be. They're doing the work that they guaranteed that they were doing. It is up to the proper code and that all the permitting is, is done, um, including the wastewater permitting that should have been done when the original work happened and didn't. Um, so they're kind of the project managers uh, for the whole thing. And then just to be on the safe side, since this is coming from reserve funds so that we don't have to come back, um, they added in another 9000 just in case. Um, so what they're looking for is approval for up to, what is it, the 231000 um, to get that, that project <coughs> funded um, and get that work done this summer. Any questions? I have a motion to approve the outlay of these facilities reserve funds up to $231,000. And there's $3.3 million in that account right now. Just, uh, so moved. Second? Second. All those in favor of the dispersal of these reserve fa facilities reserve funds say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next is the superintendent's report, which everyone should have had time to read. Is there anything else you want to highlight or discuss? Not unless they're just given the time, unless there's questions that folks have. We talked, to, talked about the Raven. Um, talked about kind of primary focus a little bit for next year in terms of um, communication. Um, taking a look at the fact that, you know, the teachers came in in their contract looking for a 10% raise. Um, taking a look at the fact that the survival of districts in Vermont right now depend on increasing enrollments, and we've done a good job in that in the last, last year or so, uh, but trying to keep that trend going. Um, the best way to, to satisfy both of those needs is uh, just the overall academic performance of the students, getting it up there as high as we can. Um, what happens in a high-performing district is that parents will move into town to take advantage of the schools there. That's how you get your enrollments up. Um, when they come, because they are very pro-education and very positive about uh, education, you tend to get a tremendous amount of support for the schools and salaries for the teachers go up and it starts this nice feedback loop that builds on itself. Um, and so the hope is, is over the course of the next year or so, um, is to really get the communication out to the community about how important those scores are if we want to get that feedback loop going. And the community means the faculty, the students, um, the parents, um, because the the general tenure has been that, you know, it's not, it's not important. Well, it is, um, you know, especially if, if, if we want to make this and keep this uh, a viable district that's able to grow, continue to build programs, um, and get people moving into town to increase the tax base. Um, I mean, the, the, it all kind of flows together into one. So that was a lot of the discussion um, that was here and about, you know, ways uh, to, to accomplish that. Um, talked a, a lot about the board's ends. Um, last October we did an interpretation of them. Um, and so what's happening at this point in time, and I put in the special education uh, team's work in there, um, they have taken the work that was started last October 
and as a K-12 team have developed their own interpretation of the ends, how they're going to measure it, how they're going to report it to me, and how they're going to report it to the board um, so that they're setting themselves up for continuous improvement. Um, that process, that, that, that ownership, that interpretation of what it means of determining what measurements show improvement and being accountable to that is going to be happening across all the departments. Right now the work is happening in uh, special education and mathematics, um, but the big focus for next year is having that happen across all the departments that tie into the ends. Um, the reason being is because it goes back to improving academic performance and getting that feedback loop going that we, that, that we want so desperately. Um, to happen. So, um, school lunch program, um, the folks that go out and do the bidding, uh, they're estimating a 4% increase um, in the cost of purchasing food next year. We were trying to figure out if that had to do with the tariff war that's going on um, right now at the federal level, um, but it'll be uh, until July to see if potentially we have to increase the cost of school lunches because of it. Don't believe we will, but it's a, it's a possibility. Okay. Um, so there's other uh, principals' reports and administrative reports in our packet. Hopefully, everyone has taken the time before we got here to read it. Um, financial report. Lane, is there anything we should be concerned about or, or um, take note of? There, everything is is actually really good. Um, we have a, have a surplus that we've been using for, for some of the outstanding projects, and there should still be a good chunk of money to go over into the reserve funds at the, the end of the year. Robin's trying to get the final totals. Um, even after our spending, it's in excess of 200000 So we're, we're in very good shape. Um, let me find, I have some notes here. A couple of pieces. some point in time, what it might, might be good maybe in the fall is I can take folks through to take a look at this little report and, and know what the parts and pieces are um, here. Um, the only one, the one that usually comes out in terms of, of questions uh, is usually the food, the, the cost um, for the lunch program. It's showing negative 70,000. Um, it's actually a, bit, a little bit better than where we were last year. And we actually should pretty much be in the black because the last two months of revenues are not in that number yet. So it looks like that, that's working out pretty well right now. Um, but everything else is, is, is on track, just, just like it should be. Um, I've kind of said before, one of the things that I do in terms of talking with Robin is I look at where the negatives are. That's what I ask questions about. Um, but the other thing that I do is I take a look at the total amount of money that was, was put into the budget in a certain line. I divide it by 12, and then I can tell based upon that, you know, no, no spending is really linear, right. but I can tell if we're kind of on track, you know, given where we are in the fiscal year, we're, we're well on track, things are in good shape. Okay. So, yeah. Anything else? Unless there's questions. Ashley, how do we do? Okay, guys, this is the first time I'm going through this, so I haven't even touched the back page yet. <laughs> However, what I wrote for notes, I said the time schedule was off. However, we incorporated pertinent topics um, that were not noted on the agenda, and the chair does a nice job soliciting feedback and encouraging involvement. But I'll fill out the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You did a good job. It always comes as a rush at the end, so <laughs> we are impressed. Um, next, we have an executive session.